we're back, guys. Water Change Wednesday. New viewers, Water Change Wednesday is a question and answer format. You ask me a question in the description below the video in the comments section. I try to answer it there, and then I try to answer it here. All right, so let's get right into the video. First question, this actually came up a couple times and maybe some of us were wondering and just didn't ask the question. So Tin asked, what is the purpose of the internal overflow? And the purpose of the internal overflow, guys, is many fold. Right, the internal overflow has a couple good things that really can help your tank. And the first thing is gas exchange. When you have the water flowing over an overflow into another compartment, it makes more contact with the air surface. So therefore, there's better gas exchange. Oxygen and carbon dioxide are transferred way better. It also helps accumulate detritus in there. Rather than settling in the bottom of your main display, Whatever your flow is churning up in the water will then pass over the overflow and settle inside the overflow box. It's great for your biological filter to turn the water over. If you're not turning your water over, circulation helps, but it's not the same as transferring this water into a different compartment. It really serves as a mini sump, so to speak. The other issue is it takes that thin dust or compound layer that forms on the surface of your tank, that really inhibits gas exchange. And sometimes if it gets bad enough, it'll affect your light coming through the water. All right, so let's take a look at the lighting canopy that I made at a foam core board and foam blocking. It's worked out really well, guys. The first setup that you see here was with only foam on the sides. But what I noticed is even though the AI Prime super light, it made the foam core board sag a little bit. So I like the light canopy here, guys. This is the foam blocking. And I cut some pieces here to raise it up off the side. I use super glue to glue it. And then this is foam core board. And it's really stiff and it just looks okay to me. So I just like the way it looks, guys. It serves the purpose and it looks nice. Cut a hole in the top, set this on there, and there it is. It blocks the light from going over the sides quite a bit. And that's what I like. I don't like a lot of light where it's not needed. So it focuses the light down below. The only issue that I might have, and so far it's been okay, is moisture. You know, because it's foam core board, if there was too much moisture, it's going to get damp and maybe get soggy or wrinkly. But I've felt every day since I've started it, which has almost been three or four days now, and no, no, nothing wet underneath. I'll squeeze this one in. It's not reef content, but I feel like I should. Uh, Lionel Villa tin plate pre-war standard gauge and Zo asked, what camera do I use for filming your tanks and YouTube videos? I use the Canon M50, that's on me now, for close up and doing this, the monologue stuff. And then I use iPhone 11 SE to take tank shots. I have a close up lens, I actually did a video on that that does the close-ups. It's a pretty good camera on the iPhone. All right, let's take a look at a couple things in the tank. All right, what I thought I'd show you guys here, guys, is this yellow stuff is actually spongy tissue. And I'm not sure where it's gonna go or how it will grow, whether it'll spread or grow up or out. But I thought what we would do is take a look at anything that has potential.
All right, this is also spongy material on this Tonga rock. So I don't know what this is going to do either, guys, but Fish Guy Mike said this is a form of sponge. If we do some research, we could probably figure out what type it is, but let's see what it does. If you notice, it's in a couple spots. And I kind of touched it while I was putting it in. It's kind of mushy. So not your typical sponge with the holes in it and all that, but let's see what it winds up doing. Bearded Flip Flop had a question about lanthanum chloride or phosphate RX. I had done a video some time ago that if you really have a bad phosphate issue and you've tried the things I've mentioned, vacuuming your gravel or your sand bed, a large water change along with it, once that gets down to a level, if you still are struggling, you can always try some lanthanum chloride or the brand name is Phosphate RX. He was asking, do you need a filter sock in the exact location that you're putting the drops of lanthanum chloride in? And I had said no, but you do want all the water in the tank to pass through a filter sock. You can get away with just a skimmer. That's the way I've done it. Anytime I've used Phosphate RX, it's been in the 20 gallon tank and it's only been a matter of four or five drops. Normanos asks, why Wednesday and not another day like water change Friday? Well, I really did water change Wednesday. It's not rhyming, but they both water change Wednesday. They both begin with W. I thought that was kind of cool. And then I thought, uh, it's the middle of the week. It'll be easier for me to do a video on a Wednesday and then for Sunday rather than too close together. So that's why it's Water Change Wednesday. Guys, I wanted to thank you for your comments and suggestions about the Kenya tree. I'm telling you, I've tried everything. More flow, less flow, more light, uh, temperature. Parameters are good. I'm starting to think they're too good. My nitrate is like reading one part per million. So what I did this week is I skipped a water change and I'm noticing it to stand up a little bit more. So I'm just trying everything, guys. But I appreciate your comments and trying to help me out. We'll work it out. We'll get it. We'll get it. I had this on feed mode. I think it's trying to come back on, yeah. This is the mini wave maker. It goes on feed mode when you touch a button for 10 minutes and then it comes back on. So now you're gonna to start to see the shimmer and the water. So that's cool. So that's what I have in there too. For new viewers, that's the mini wave by Heiger. And that does it for the 10 gallon tank. You won't need more than one in there. And I have the return. That I might cut back. See that, guys? I'm going to cut that hose back a little. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's doing all right there. You can't really see it. But I might cut it back so the end just sticks out of the overflow box. All right. This is one of my favorite comments of the week, guys. I love these comments. It's T-G-O-D. T-God. T God Raid says, great video, leaving a comment just because. All right, guys, so I think that does it for this one. Have a great rest of the evening, Wednesday night, and I'll see you on Sunday. What am I gonna do Sunday? What will we do on Sunday? Hmm, I don't know yet. So, but I always put one out on Sunday, unless I'm sick, which I never get sick, knock on wood. All right, that should do it, guys, right? I know I went off on a rant a little bit today. I don't know. I just have to have fun back here. Aussie, <laughs> Aussie D, I know. I do have fun behind the camera, you know? <laughs> I, had a, I had quite a few questions this week. And one came up a couple times, and I think it was Tin, yeah, Tin, and, <laughs> hold on. Of all the past Water Change Wednesdays, we're up to 20. And if you have a particular question you're looking to be answered, 
if you have a particular question that you want answered, check in the playlist. I usually list the description. All right, let's take a look at a couple things in the tank. I don't know what I'm going to say when I get down there. I know we'll take, see, I don't know what I'm going to say when we get down there, but I'll see what I see and I'll mention what I see going on down there, that's all. But I know we'll talk about 